Do you want to be more confident? Do you want to be more self-assured? Would it be valuable to you in your life if you didn't have the level of self-doubt that you have right now? If you want to change your mindset, if you want to learn how to have more happiness in your life, more success in your life, and be more authentically you, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the More Confidence with Luna Guy podcast. I am your host, Lenaria Gaia. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the More Confidence with Luna Gaia podcast. That's me. I'm Luna Gaia. This is my podcast. You have come here to episode 172. We've been hanging out. We've been doing this for a while. Sometimes you will find that here we talk to other people. Sometimes it's just me hanging out, having a conversation with you, irrelevant of whether or not it is an interview style or just you and I having a conversation. Our mission here is to help you to be more confident. Duh, the More Confidence with Luna Gaia podcast, right? Because I know, I know where you're at. I used to hate myself and I used to doubt myself and I used to hold myself back a lot. The negative self-talk in my head was too much for me to bear at times. And that led me to running away, to avoiding, to having self-harm, lots of, lots of mechanisms of distraction, dare I call it. And you probably do that too. You don't want to be in your own head. So you distract yourself by numbing kind of things that could be eating. It could be drinking, socializing, could be working out. It could be scrolling, shopping, whatever it is for you. I see you. I feel you. I hear you. And, you know, there's a, there's a very common thing. I reckon it's in the top five on well, the top five things of a top five obstacles that get in the way from people being their most confident and authentic self. And I'm sure that you experience it for yourself as well. It's on today's episode, really on 172, I want us to unpack this. One of, one of those top fives of getting in our way, it's self-doubt. Self-doubt. We doubt ourselves. We think that we can't. We assume that we're not enough. Who am I to have that? And we hold ourselves back. Wouldn't it be cool if you didn't have to do that anymore? How do you think life would be if you didn't have to hold yourself back? What do you think that you might be open to? What kind of activities might you do? What what experiences might you actually go on if you didn't hold yourself back anymore? If you didn't have that level of self-doubt, what would you do? Would you, <clears throat> I was going to say fly to the moon. <laughs> Maybe that was the case. Maybe you would think that was possible. You know, but it's not necessarily just big go after your dreams kind of vibe, although that is part of my mission here. My mission here in all of the work that I do at More Confidence is, you know, in my courses, in my programs, in my events, in my coaching, and here on this podcast, as well as my books and other content, is to help you get out of your own way that you can stop hiding and start giving to the world your unique talents and gifts. And so maybe there is some kind of unique talent and gift that you have with inside of you that you think, oh, no, I'm not that good at it. You know, I could never make a living out of that. Or, you know, even if it's not making a living, maybe you're just like, I just have always wanted to be able to dance. And maybe you never want to earn money from that. You just want to go dance. I think it was Van Gogh who said, if there's a voice inside of your head that says you cannot paint, then paint you must and that voice will go away. I think that there's self-doubt that we have limits us in so many ways, not just in the big things like maybe our dreams or bringing out our heart's desires into the world but also just in the micro stuff. Are you limiting yourself from going to that job? You know, having, having, having a new job, going for an interview. Are you holding yourself back from even applying for that? Are you holding yourself back from having love? All right. You think, oh my God, well, no one's out there. No one's ever going to love me. Maybe you're just holding yourself back from like, I'm, I want to go to the beach, but I can't because of my current body. All of that is self-doubt. All of that is holding yourself back and thinking to yourself that you can't have something. And then maybe even if you do happen to go to the interview, you psych yourself out. How many, how many times has this happened to you where you finally get the courage to, to go do the thing, you feel like you make a complete hash of it, and so you use that as a reference point of why you shouldn't do it. That happens, Right. Because you had a, quote, failure, because you didn't do well once, you decide that that's the evidence that you need to never do it again. And yet, when we look at really successful people in any area of their life, if we're talking music, if we're talking love, if we're talking you know, athleticism in our bodies, if we're talking financial, whatever it happens to be, whatever 
you want to get good at, you're going to have to move through failure. It's part of the deal. It's absolutely part of the deal of any recipe of success is that you learn. You learn how to deal with the setbacks. Of course, the first time you go to your dance class, you're going to suck at it. It's the first time. But you'll be a little bit better by the end of that first dance class. And then the second time, you'll be a little bit better than you were the first time. And the third and the fourth and so on and so on. If you are expecting that you're never going to fail, if you're never going to suck at something, then you'll never learn something new. You have to literally be willing to suck at things in order to learn something new. Go ahead and write that down. Grab out your journal right now. Be willing to suck. (laughs) Write that down right now. Because your self-doubt tells you that you need to get it right. Your self-doubt says, oh, well, I can't do it, so therefore, therefore I shouldn't do it. Yeah, but how else do you learn? How else do you get any level of skill or competency at something if you don't know, like if you're never willing to get it wrong, if you're never willing to suck at anything, you're never going to get any better at it. I'll share with you a story that happened recently for me. I was at a, I was chatting with a friend and she's just started to play the cello which is amazing. What an instrument. Holy smokes. And she knows that I've been playing piano for for several years. I'm self-taught. I just show up and play, do my piano practice every day. And And she said to me, did you ever get frustrated like when you couldn't play something? And I kind of giggled and I was like, you said that as if it's in the past. Did I ever get frustrated when I couldn't play something? And she said, yeah, so, you know, when when you were a beginner and you couldn't play something, did you get frustrated? (laughs) And I, I giggled again and I said, the reason I'm giggling, my dear friend here, is because I still get frustrated and I still can't play things. She's like, what? I'm like, if you're expecting to not get frustrated while learning this instrument, you're going to run into a lot of difficulties with it, right? You will be frustrated. Of course you will. Because you don't get, it doesn't get easier, you just get better. And this is what I said to her, that while playing the piano, things that I wouldn't even dare think about playing, even 12 months ago or three years ago, I wouldn't even think about playing them three years ago. They now are easy for me. Now I just can. But three years ago when I learned how to play them, they were really hard and it was really frustrating for me that I couldn't play it, right? Each new layer of a new skill, you're not going to be able to do it. That's the point. If you already knew how to do it, you wouldn't have to learn how to do it. It's the same with your confidence. It's actually the same with any new skill. Skill is a, uh, Confidence is a skill, by the way. Any new skill that you have, anything that you are developing in, you are going to suck at each new level of it. They say the same thing about working out, going to the gym, right? The weights don't get any lighter. You just get stronger. So now lifting, uh, you know, a, a two kilo dumbbell for bicep curls, now you have to lift three or four or five, and it's still hard. It's still just as hard at five as what it was at two, except now you're lifting a heavier weight. And it's the same with any skill that you learn. If you're expecting to never fail, if you're expecting to never suck at it, if you're expecting that you will never be frustrated and it's always going to be easy, you can expect to suffer wholeheartedly you can expect to suffer because that's not how it works. Even people at the elite of whatever game that they play, right? You've got someone, you know, a Serena Williams, right? Serena Williams, if she's having to learn a new technique in tennis or she comes up against someone who is challenging her, she's going to have to work hard for that. And she might be frustrated that she can't beat the next person. Maybe she's getting older. Maybe they're younger. Maybe they've got different techniques. Whatever it happens to be, there are, at each new layer, each new level of any new skill, you're going to find frustration. And maybe your self-doubt is going to say to you, see, that's why we can't. See? And if you listen to that voice of self-doubt, if that's the one that's in charge of you and in charge of everything that's happening, you're never going to do anything. And that's what we're here to talk about here today, this self-doubt. So welcome. Welcome to everybody. I understand that each podcast is somebody's first. 
So if this is your first podcast hanging out with me, Luna Gaia, it is so wonderful to have you here. I appreciate you so deeply. And to all my listeners and watchers, thank you for being here. Thank you for deciding to spend the time learning how to overcome these things within yourself. Because you could be listening and watching to any sort of other entertainment that's out there. And I so appreciate that you are here to learn how to, you know, carve a path for yourself that is full of love rather than full of doubt. Because I know that there's a deep calling in you. Deeper than maybe you even let yourself acknowledge that there's a part of you that really just wants to be free. There's a part of you that wants to be happy. There's a part of you that really doesn't want to have to play in this mind game of limiting yourself. For as long as you have been, do you have to keep doing it? And the answer is no, you don't. And I can feel that calling in you. And here in this podcast, as well as my courses and my books and my coaching, absolutely helps you to overcome these limits within yourself. Doesn't have to be that way. You can have a different experience within your life, particularly with all the skills that I'm teaching you. Yeah. If self-doubt wasn't in your artillery of tools, if self-doubt doesn't exist within your within your tools of life, what would your life look like, do you think? Like what would you what would you do? Would you go for it? Whatever it happens to be, you might ask that person out or you might wear that you know, that colour or that pattern that you've been told that you're not meant to wear? Would you go for jobs? What what kind of life would you have? Would you trust yourself, do you think? Were you able to back yourself? You wouldn't have any of that second guessing that's going on. And really, you'd be okay to fail, don't you think? If you didn't doubt yourself when you had the failure, you were like, oh, okay, cool. Well, that's just part of the deal. Hear me loud and clearly, and maybe, maybe even write this down. Failure is part of the recipe of success. Failure is part of a recipe of success. If you don't have failure when you're trying to get successful, it's like trying to swim in a pool without water. It's going to (laughs) hurt. It's going to hurt and it's not going to work. Failure is part of the deal. And and the sooner that we we realize that and the sooner that we recognize that, that self-doubt tends to quieten down because you're more willing to try new things. You might even find that if you if you lived in a world without this self-doubt within yourself, that you'd be more resilient. That, you know, each knockdown that you have, each time you have that moment of fear, that you would just get back up again. Brush yourself off, take a big deep breath, breath and get on. And maybe you'd even like go towards your dreams. I don't know what your dreams are for you, but I'm sure that you have them. And maybe there's a bunch of you who haven't let yourself dream in a long time because you think that it's not for you, that you can't have it, that it isn't available to you. That that self-doubt has been the narrative that's been holding you back. It's the thing that is limiting you. It's the thing that says, I can't dream. But what if you could? What if there was something inside of you that could come to fruition, that could come to life? I want that for you. And I know that you can have it as well. I think that's a thing. I know that you can. Because self-doubt is almost like a, a a disability of the mind in that kind of sense. It's like it's like a a chain. It, it is being condensed. You you are being held back. You are being restricted. It's a restriction of the mind. Yeah, and it stops us from living fully, from properly living. Because you say to yourself, "Well, what if I fail? What if what if I look silly? What if people don't like me?" All the fear comes up around, yeah, but maybe I can't. You also have moments of like, who am I to do that? Things like this don't happen to people like me. You know, you you hold yourself back. You are not free. You're most certainly not free. You're full of judgment in yourself. And you kind of live in this sense of guilt and shame from the past as well. You're like, oh, yeah, but I, I tried surfing that one time and my boob fell out. And everybody laughed at me. And maybe that's a memory you have from being in high school and that has tormented you. So you've never wanted to get on a surfboard since, despite the fact that maybe you want to surf. There's all these kind of guilt and shame parts of us of, no, well, if I go after my dreams, I'm letting my mum down. Or, you know, my dad won't be happy if I don't go be a doctor. Whatever it happens to be, there is this conditioning and 
programming that we've had from being a child based in our unconscious beliefs, right? And we've talked about this many times throughout our time together on this podcast. So if you haven't gone and checked out any of those, please go have a look at our belief systems. I definitely go into more details around this in my course, Claim Your Confidence. We actually start in a week's time. So if you are sitting on the fence about joining us for Claim Your Confidence, I highly recommend that you come and join us because I'm going to help you to uncover your unconscious beliefs that are holding you back. Deal with your fear. Deal with the negative self-talk. I'm going to help you to be more comfortable and confident within your body, learn how to communicate more effectively and deal with your emotions. That's just foundations as well. As we move up to the advanced level, which is also available for you to join, we start after after the first one, we then go into advanced and there we do boundaries, teach you how to be assertive, boundaries of communication for three solid weeks how to find your passion and purpose, how to have the courage to be your most authentic self, how to go after your dreams, how to reconnect with the wisdom of your body. So much gold that I'm going to share with you in Claim Your Confidence Level 1 and Level 2. So go ahead and check out. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. So go check it out, www.moreconfidence.com.au forward slash claim your confidence. Or just shoot me a message. If you want to have a conversation about it, let me know. We'll have a conversation. Those unconscious beliefs are holding us back. The, the who we think that we should be, who, we're, who we are believing ourselves to be. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Who am I? Well, who are you not to, really? There's the people who have done, say, great things in the world, or whoever you're comparing yourself to, they are just people just like you. They just are. We all go to the toilet. We all... You know, it it all stinks from time to time, you know, if not every single time. We all digest. We all excavate. We're human. You're human. And we may want to put people on the pedestal and say, oh, my God, look how successful they are, or rich they are, or look how talented they are, or whatever. But what I want you to understand, anybody who's got any level of success in any area of their life works for it. You know, you see an amazing piano player. And I used to do this back in the day before I started playing piano. I would see them and be like, oh, my God, it's just so easy for them. It's just so effortless for them. Yeah, because you're seeing them perform. What you're not seeing, you know, you might see an hour or two of, a, of an artist performing. You don't see the uh, 50, 70, 100 hours that they have put in to get to that point just for that single song. You know, you have you have an artist like Elton John or, you know, Beyonce, for example, they put hours, tens, hundreds of hours into producing just one show. And they have been practicing and working on their craft for decades, right? I think that there can be this real expectation. Our self-doubt convinces us that people just got lucky, that people just happened to stumble across it. Interestingly enough, when it got to like how you get so lucky, there's a series coming up very, very soon here on the More Confidence Learner Guy podcast called How How Did You Get So Lucky? How'd you get so lucky? And it's a series where I interview people who are living their lives the way that they want to. And people might call them lucky. And I'm going to interview them to find out, did they really get lucky? Is that what really happened? Because, you know, luck and timing, mm, it's called skill. It's called skill and courage and grit. Very often, to live the life of your dreams is not for the faint-hearted. So what we have to understand that this self-doubt has a way of talking to us and saying to us that that we can't possibly get the same things that someone else does. But if we are willing to think the same way, if we are willing to do the same things, then we're going to get the similar results. Think about me with the piano. So I've been self-teaching myself for just 10 minutes a day. Sometimes it's half an hour. Sometimes it's an hour. But at minimum 10 minutes a day, I show up to my piano and have done for the last four years or so. And I can play piano okay. Again, I can hold tunes. I can. You can give me a whole bunch of chords and I can be at a party and we can have an absolute raucous with it. Right? I can have a good time. I'm not a highly skilled piano player at all, but give me another four years and then another four years and maybe another 40 years because, goodness, I'm only just turned 40. What would happen if I practice piano every day for the next decade? What would happen if you went, rather than thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to fail or I can't do that, what if you just went, 
I'm just going to see what happens if I show up to it every day for 10 years. You think 10 years, it's so long. The truth is your 10 years is going to pass anyway. How quickly has the last 10 years passed for you? Fast, right? 10 years is going to pass anyway, so you may as well get to doing the things. I can only presume that in another six years' time, when I hit my first 10-year mark of playing the piano, I'm going to be a pretty decent piano player. I'm already a kind of decent piano player. I reckon in another six years, I'm going to be even better. Of course I am, because every year I get better. Every day that I show up to it, I get better at it. The skill gets sharpened. And it's the same here with our confidence and our self-love. It's actually a skill that we sharpen over time. When we think about what self-doubt is, really, it's we're unsure of ourselves, right? We're unclear of who we are and what we stand for. To doubt oneself, we're doubting the self, right? Now, we kind of take that personally and be like, see, I've got self-doubt, therefore I can't. But if we break it down, there is a self and you are doubting that self. So then you don't take any action, you don't execute. If we were to strengthen the self, because you're doubting in the self, right? If you were to strengthen the self, then the less doubt would be there, simply because you know who you are. So for example, if we go back to the piano thing here, I don't need to doubt myself because I just know I'm going to show up every day. I'm just going to show up every day. And because I know that I'm just going to show up every day, then I'm going to get better at it. The self within me goes, I'm disciplined, I'm determined, I'm committed. I'm not worrying about the outcome so much. I'm I'm focusing my attention on the practice to show up to it, which is what you can do with anything. You go, cool, well, at least, okay, I'm afraid to wear a bikini to the beach. I'm just going to rock up. It's going to be scary. And I'm going to give you three steps for you to be able to overcome your self-doubt. It's going to be scary. Just say you show up and you did it the first time. Maybe you were really nervous and it was super uncomfortable. You're there for 35 seconds and then you quickly cover up and leave the beach. Maybe next time it's 45 seconds. Maybe the time after that it's a minute. You see what happens here? The more that you do it, the better you get it and you get a stronger sense of self in the process of doing it. Because low self-esteem, when we have low self-esteem, when we have self, low self-worth, it is listening to others' thoughts on you how you should be. It's about having paying attention to other people's perceptions and projections of who you are meant to be and not listening to who we are within ourselves. This happens naturally. This is part of conditioning. This is happens to all of us, except when the, the feedback from the world, when, when we ha- have maybe been conditioned by parents who haven't given us a lot of faith within ourselves, we believe it to be true. Oh, no, but you don't understand I'm not enough. And what that lends itself to is creating a bit of a, like a fickle identity. We create an identity within ourselves that's based on other people's viewpoints and we become a chameleon. So we don't really know who we are. If we're in this environment, we're like that. If we're in that environment, we're like that. If we're around this person, we act this way. But if we're around that person, we believe something totally different. And so there's a sense of no no sense of strong self within that. Of course, we're going to doubt ourselves when there's no sense of who who am I. There's no sense of self. So the three things that I want to share with you here on today's episode around how to overcome the self-doubt. The first one is to know thyself. You got to know you and and you got to spend time alone, spend time journaling, spend time, you know, like do coaches, you know, like work with a coach, do courses, somehow find access to how do you get to know yourself on a deeper level? I'm talking your beliefs, your conditionings, your patterns. What are you, what are your fears? What are your doubts? What are you holding yourself back for? And a coach can do that. If you're curious about coaching, get in touch with me for sure. And we can do that through Claim Your Confidence Level 1 and Level 2. So if you are curious about those, go ahead and click the link. I can certainly help you. You can journal. You can find out. Ask yourself. When when self-doubt comes and, and says, I can't do that. I'm not that type of person. Right? So then we go, cool. Well, what type of person do I think I am? Well, I'm shy and I'm meek and I'm, and I'm timid. Cool. Okay. So find out what belief is behind the I'm shy, I'm meek, I'm timid. 
How have you gathered that evidence? How have you figured out that you are shy? And then are you? Do you want to be? Is, the, is that part of who you are or is it part of what you've been taught to be? I'll give you an example on that. I grew up in, a, in an environment to which attention was scarce. I'm the youngest of five and my parents were very busy, as you can imagine, running their own businesses as well. So attention was scarce. And so I learned that in order to get attention, if I was like rosy cheeked and people pleasing and if I was happy all the time and I was extroverted, then I got more attention from my parents. Right. And I, they were able to take me to events and they were, you know, and other adults would give me attention. I was able to kind of like be the the shining good girl. And I learned how to have lots of small talk and I learned how to connect with adults and people would always say, oh, my God, you're so mature for your age and you're so outgoing. I want you to know that in my core, I'm not outgoing. I'm not. I'm actually not. I'm an introvert. And large social situations, like even, even say five or six people, seven people, can make me feel uncomfortable. I'm far better with it these days, but I learnt in my childhood how to be extroverted and how to be, how to be the life of the party, but I never actually was. So you might have a belief about who you were because that's how you were able to survive childhood. And I did survive childhood that way. It worked for me very, very well. And now I have a whole bunch of skill set around how I can, you know, I can network a room socially if I want to. Look, I'm, I'm a speaker and I hang on here and you could say she's super confident. You would never think that in a social situation that I would be like that. If I ever meet you at a, at a speaking event, if any of the events that I run, you will find that I easily have conversations with everybody because I understand it's not, it's not a social event, right? I'm helping you. We're having conversations. I'm in my element. But if I'm in a social situation, I find the small talk really draining. I find it, I find it can be super challenging for me. And I decided many years ago that I was going to stop lying to myself around that. Know thyself. That's why this one is so important, the first one. Number two here is explore your beliefs. We've got to explore what's going on beneath the surface, right? So what's underneath the self-doubt? What is the belief that is fueling that you know, um, you'll, you'll sit there and maybe you have a belief, I'll fail. Well, I want you to doubt your doubts. Ask yourself, how do I know that? How do I know that I'm a failure? How do I know that I'm a loser? How do I know that I will fail? Or how do I know that I will fail again and again and again and never be able to do it? The truth is you don't. You have a belief and all our beliefs are made up. So you may as well make up ones that serve you, right? Explore your beliefs. Again, you can do that with a coach, which I'm available for, and you can do it through Claim Your Confidence. If there's you know, any other courses, I don't care. You don't have to do it through me. Go find a coach. Go work with someone that helps you to uncover your beliefs, specifically pertaining to your low self-worth and your low confidence, so that you can move beyond that. Number one, know thyself. Number two, explore your beliefs. Number three here is take doubt with you. Take it with you. Don't expect that your doubt is going to go away before you take action. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things. People expect that they, they're not going to feel any self-doubt. They're going to be completely fearless and full of courage when they take an action. But that's not how it works. Courage actually requires fear. If you weren't afraid, it wouldn't be courage. To be courageous is to do something despite the fear. You're feeling the fear and doing it anyway, as Susan Jeffers would say. Take self-doubt with you. Okay, cool. So like take it out on a date. Just say you're going on a date. You're like, oh my God, what if they don't like me? And you're thinking to yourself like, this is stupid. I look dumb. Say to yourself, hello, self-doubt. I know you're here. Come, you're sitting in my pocket. It's all good. You can, you, you can come with me. The self-doubt doesn't get to drive the car, doesn't get to change the music, doesn't get to decide what you're going to wear, but it does get to come with you. If you can bring your self-doubt with you and take action on repeat, then that voice will be silenced. That voice for that particular thing won't be there anymore. Sure, when you take it to the next level and you do the new hard thing, self-doubt's going to come up again. This isn't about getting rid of self-doubt. This is about learning how to deal with self-doubt. And we learn how to deal with self-doubt by getting to know ourselves, finding out and challenging the beliefs that are below the self-doubt, 
and by acting irrelevant of whether or not there's self-doubt there anyway. There's always going to be that element of, I don't know if I can. If you've never done it before, you don't know if you can. But there's one guarantee. If you don't do it, you won't do it. If you do do it, you may be able to do it. But you don't get that chance. You miss, as Wayne Gretzky would say, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. You got to go for it. And not just once, keep going and repeat. Show up to that skill, show up to that class, show up to that talent. What are you doing again and again and again? Come back to me in 10 years time, having implemented everything that I teach in my courses and my coaching, and then tell me it doesn't work. Yeah? Doesn't even need to take 10 years. Show it, do it for 12 months, do it for six months. Even just for 60 days, if for 60 days you doubted your doubts rather than letting your doubt doubt you, what would happen? And message me. Send me an email, loveyourself at moreconfidence.com.au. I'd love to hear from you. What is, you know, if you do implement this, see what happens. Find out and let me know how you go with all that. Of course, if you do want to join us for Claim Your Confidence, we start in just one week, actually a little bit less than. So February 13, we start Claim Your Confidence Foundations, which is level one. If you are curious about that, go ahead and book a call with me. Let's have a conversation. I think it's www.moreconfidence.com.au forward slash calendar. You can just go ahead and book a free power call there and we can have a conversation to, to see if it's in alignment with you. Let's get you moving away from this self-doubt and moving to back yourself. Any questions, any queries, it's all, you're always welcome to, to get in touch with me. I love hearing from you. Email, social media, wherever it happens to be. It means the world to me that you're here and I would love for you to go ahead and hit that follow button or the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an episode from me so that you can be more confident self. I love you, my loves, and I hope that you love you too. Happy self-loving. Thank you so much for listening to the More Confidence with Luna Guy podcast. I hope you feel more confident, more self-assured and ready to go tackle the world's problems and maybe kick ass in some of your dreams. If you haven't already, I would love for you to like and subscribe, follow and maybe leave a review so that other people know how to find this awesome podcast too. If you're wanting to sink your teeth into something even more juicy, my number one best-selling book, Perfectly Imperfect, Your Complete Guide to Loving Yourself and Loving Your Body is now available on all good bookstore sites, both in print, digital, and I narrated it for Audible as well. If you think the coaching or maybe one of my courses is for you, why not head to www.moreconfidence.com.au and get in touch and see if we can talk. And of course, you can find me all across the social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, which is where you're probably listening now, or maybe even here on the podcast platform, sending you big love and wishing you a beautiful day.